Well, good evening, and uh, there are several viewers on this evening. It's good to be with you guys. We miss you terribly. Um, we'd really love to meet again um, at our church. And for several of you, there may be some that are watching the live stream that don't go to our church. We'd love to invite you out. But, um, but thank you for taking the time this evening to join us and to have a Bible study. We're looking forward to it. Um, I'm looking forward to what Pastor Kuntz has to teach us about. And uh, I just encourage you, grab your Bibles, say amen to the live stream, and uh, just, just have a good time with it. Enjoy the time with your family and make it a special time. Um, we are going to have a word of prayer, and then Pastor's going to come, and he's going to have a few announcements. We're going to open up with the Bible study. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for life. Thank you for allowing us to be alive today. Thank you for allowing us to enjoy um, your presence. I pray that tonight specifically, we would learn a lot from your word. I pray that it would be a productive time, that we'd grow, that we grow, that we would um, put you first in our lives, and that this message would, would change us. I pray that we wouldn't walk away from this message unchanged. We love you, Savior. Thank you for allowing this avenue of live stream to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, once again, good evening, and uh, once again, we find ourselves in a different um, uh, platform than usual. Instead of meeting at Faithway Baptist Church uh, due to the shelter at home, we are um, meeting here at our house. So this is in my home today, and I'm thankful that you have tuned in, and I pray that today's uh, challenge and message would be a blessing and an encouragement to you. Uh, before we get started, I did uh, have a few um, announcements here to make, and that is um, uh, tomorrow night, and I'll be sending this out via email and text, I have a line set up, a uh, conference line, uh, that has a regular number that you will dial in on, and then it'll ask you for the code, and then when you put the code in, you'll be put into the conference, and uh, I thought we could have a time of prayer tomorrow night. So if you'd like to join us for that, it'll be at 7 p.m. And I will send all the information out tomorrow on how to log on. It's very simple. In fact, last night for Neighborhood Bible Time, we had uh, about 34 people on the conference call. And it went really well. It was very sweet and encouraging as we were praying for one another and also uh, just talking a little bit about what the Lord was doing in each one of our lives. So please plan uh to uh, be online tomorrow or on the conference call tomorrow as well. Uh, continue to um, pray for one another. I'd like to just give you some encouraging words here. My wife was called by several people today, just encouraging her. And I know that she's made about seven or eight or nine phone calls encouraging others. And so please do that. Uh, take out our directory. That's what it was for, to foster fellowship. And during this time, um, pick, pick a couple minutes throughout the day and Pick a few different members or people that are in our fellowship and give them a call and see how they're doing and encourage them in the Lord. Uh, I do have prayer requests. And what I'm going to do is just for the sake of privacy is that I'm going to send those out via um, uh, an email as well, of the ones that I've received. But there is one I am going to mention, and that is uh, Lynn and Karen Acker's daughter uh, that's up in the... Um, Springfield area of uh, Massachusetts, uh, her um, mother-in-law, Pat Curran, passed away. And so please be in prayer for the family and uh, as, as they grieve and mourn, but yet they're excited that uh, she's home with the Lord. She's out of pain and she's uh, with her Savior. But still be, be praying for the family. And then the rest of these are prayer requests I'll send out um, shortly. Well, since we're in a Bible study, uh, let's make sure that uh, that's what we're doing. Take your Bibles, if you would, and turn to the book of Romans. The book of Romans, and chapter number 8 is where we will find ourselves. I'll give you a couple moments to get there, since I can't look out and see what you're doing. I'm sure that right now you are moving around in the Scriptures to find a very familiar book and also a very familiar passage. Well, we're certainly living, to me, in one of the most exciting times. Sometimes we look at times in the past and, and we say, boy, if I would have lived at that time, how exciting that would have been to see uh, what was taking place. But may I remind you that we're in exciting times right now. The Lord is doing a great work in our world and we're part of it. 
In fact, we could be the generation that sees the Lord return. How would that be to hear the trumpet sound and all of a sudden we're all just caught up in the air in the twinkling of an eye? We certainly don't know when the Lord will return, but we know he will return. Well, the church is alive and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, is on the throne. And that, and that comment right there just shows the authority that Christ has uh, being on the throne. God's in control and he's orchestrating every moment of time to accomplish his will, to accomplish his will. Tonight, as we gather together via live streaming, uh, let's consider a very familiar verse tonight. And so if you're in uh, Romans chapter 8, let's uh, take our eyes and, and follow down the scriptures to uh, verse number 28 of Romans chapter number 8. That is verse number 28. The scriptures say, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Let's pray together. Father, thank you now as we um, are comfortable in who you are, uh, a little uncomfortable in, in talking to a camera, but Lord, you could overcome that. The Holy Spirit is real. He, he in believers, he he indwells us and leads us and guides us and illuminates scripture. And so we pray tonight as we look at the scriptures that uh, we would learn what you have for us. May we be encouraged. May we in the times and days of this unprecedented change, so sudden, so quick, may we see your hand and may we realize that you are in control. And so the question is not anymore who's in control. The question is, how should we be behaving as believers as we uh, continue uh, to serve you and to love you and to follow you? So thank you now for your scriptures. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, as we go through this Bible study, it's going to be hard to be interactive since you're there and I'm here. But I do have a few points. The, the Bible study is not very long, maybe about 20 minutes or 25 minutes. But I want you to write these points down or try to remember them. The first point we're going to look at tonight is consider me, consider me. And the second point we're going to look at is consider maturing, consider maturing. And the third that we're going to look at tonight is consider moreover, consider moreover. Well, our first point in our Bible study is consider me. Um, as we read this verse and consider what it is teaching, we need to be mindful that the verse does not say that everything that happens is good. In other words, uh, the scripture here, as, as it tells us that God works all things for good, doesn't mean that everything that takes place is good. Certainly, we would all agree that sickness is not something that is good. And there's many of our folk that are going through very difficult times physically. So we would not say that's good. Nor is what we're facing as a nation with the virus. We would not say that is good. In fact, it's, it's quite concerning nor an economic downturn or death is not a good thing. And so, but God works together good things, bad things for our good and for our glory, for his glory rather. So let me read that again. But God works together good things and bad things for our good and for his glory. And I'm glad he does. When it, what an encouragement of this truth is for us as children. He can take a circumstance as we are living through right now and cause good to come into our lives and others, even though the circumstances is very negative um, and the surface is very, and, 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 and it's very discouraging experience, God is able to take that and turn it around for our good and for his glory. From our view, it appears that the whole situation is negative, but we have to look at things from God's view and not ours. But God says, uh, wait and consider me. God has a purpose. God has a plan. So for, for, for us who love God, he is working our present situation for good. Uh, to grow us and to mature us and to use us. So all that we see that is taking place today, God is using this and he's going to use it for our own growth for our own maturity, and also to use us. You know, we have to remember that this present trial will pass. 
uh, it will go away at one time. But right now, we don't want to miss what God has for us. In the midst of the trial that we're going through, God has allowed it, and he is using it for our own good. And so let's not miss it. You know, sometimes in the scriptures it says, uh, count it all joy when we go through temptation or testing. And I believe the reason that it says it that way is, one, is that at the end we will be very joyful with the results of our own growth and how we learn more about the Lord. But I remember for me, when I was in fourth grade, third grade, I struggled, and so I had to repeat the year. So I had to do second, uh, third grade twice. And in the same way is if we miss what God is trying to teach us uh, in the midst of this trial that's so uncertain and so unprecedented, if we miss that, we're going to have to learn it again. Wouldn't it be this shame when, when God lifts this trial and things get back to normal that our attitude and our actions, we really didn't learn anything. We didn't see the hand of God. There was no growth in our own life. And if that would be the case, then we're going to have to go through a trial again so we can learn those lessons. So let's not miss what God has for us. This trial is different than most trials because some trials have an effect on just an individual. Sometimes I'll call somebody or they'll call me and they'll talk about a difficult trial that they're going through and it it's kind of hard to understand all that they're going through unless I've been through that myself. Sometimes it's a whole family. A family together is praying and seeking the Lord and going through maybe a very, very difficult time. And then there's other times where it's the church. And so as a church body, we can understand uh, what is going on because the situation directly involves the whole church. But this is interesting because this is the whole world at large. Every born-again believer, every unsaved person has this um, virus on their mind. And, and so that we can understand what others are going through and, and what a blessing we can be to be calm in the midst of the storm so that we can take every opportunity to share our faith. Here's an example. I was having discipleship um, over the phone with one of our members yesterday. And uh, since we can't meet in person, we, we just met on the phone. And he mentioned that he was at the store and they were in one of the aisles at Costco. And uh, all the toilet paper was out. Who would figure that full toilet paper would be the number one item off the shelves? But it was. And the gentleman was kind of uh, freaking out a little bit and panicking because there wasn't any. And this, this member, a born-again believer, just simply said to him, God's in control. What an opportunity that God will present at different times, even though we're sheltered, uh, that we can express to our co-workers and to our friends that God is in control. And that in the midst of everything that just seems to be so upside down, that we can tell them that God is working all things together for good. And maybe in the midst of this, uh, they'll look up and see the Lord. I would encourage you to start your own ministry while you're sheltered. In other words, if you're home from work, why not call a few of your co-workers and just ask how they're doing, seeing if their needs are being met or if there's anything that you can do for them. And in the midst of that conversation, maybe the conversation would turn and you can just share with them how uh, the Lord is in control and that this will pass and we can trust him not only through this situation, but even with our own life. And maybe you'll get an opportunity to... Uh, witness or share your faith with your co-workers. How about your neighbors? Uh, let's reach out to our neighbors. What a time to build a relationship uh, by calling them and making sure they're okay. Certainly we want to obey the law and stay sheltered away from them and more than six feet away, but um, the telephone and um, the email and text message is a great platform for us to use. So I encourage you that Christ says, God says, consider me in this verse for God. It tells us in the scriptures, and we know that all things work together for good, those that love God. And so God is working. So consider me, he says. Well, our, our second point is not just to consider me, but consider maturing. Uh, that is the mission of every one of us is to make and mature disciples. We're just not to give the gospel and then leave somebody out there to, to figure things out on their own, but we're to help edify them and build them up. And one way God does that is he uses believers like you and I 
to come alongside somebody else and say, hey, a brother or sister in Christ, let's um, sit down and let me let me teach you or show you some things that I've learned in the scriptures. And then to watch that person mature is so exciting. I don't know if you've ever had that opportunity to disciple somebody. But I want to tell you that it is a great joy and satisfaction to see that person begin to walk on their own in spiritual truth and watch them grow. In fact, the Bible tells us in 3 John, John says, I have no greater joy than this to hear that my children are walking in truth. What he's saying there is that he has led them to the Lord and through discipleship, he sees them uh, um, walking in truth and growing in their Christ likeness. And so consider maturing. This is a time that God has allowed a, a moment that he has carved out for us to see him a little clearer, unless I miss that. So not only consider me or consider Christ, consider God, but consider maturing. Uh, here's a quote from a godly pastor by the name of Henry Martin. And he lived um, back in the 1800s. He was a very godly man. He wrote several books I would highly recommend if you're a reader uh, to look his books up. They're very well thought out. They're very provocative in, in, in the way that he lays out scriptural truth. It will, it will keep you learning. Well, he made this quote in one of his books. He says, there is no more important than my personal relationship with Christ. So there's nothing more important than our personal relationship with Christ and my spiritual growth and like and and like uh, likeness to him so in other words he says as a born again believer really our most important duty is to guard our heart to grow in Christ's likeness it is important that each one of us are growing daily uh, in Christ and he, and he puts it a good way he says my personal relationship is important and my spiritual growth it is for you too uh, god has great plans for us uh, God wants to use us in a greater way. And these trials and, and, and when these things take place that we can't quite figure them out. They're unprecedented. They're, they're areas that it's hard for us to understand. God says, wait a minute. I'm in these. I'm in control. And if you'll follow me and you'll stay under the trial and you'll stay underneath the weight of it, I will change you and grow you in your Christ likeness. I was thinking today uh, about a person that maybe you have a grandparent or a great grandparent, depending on your age, uh, that would have uh, lived in the middle 1900s, say around early 1900s, say around 1915, 1913, they were born, or maybe 1910. And if you look at their life in 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 in, um, in 19 uh, in 1917, we had a world war which affected uh, many people. But then in the midst of that war in 1918, there was a, a pandemic that took place that uh, was called the Spanish flu and it affected the world and it lasted for two years. And in the midst of the war came this pandemic and on top of that, it killed over, they say, between 20 and 30 million people uh, worldwide. And so then that person would have gone through not only a world war, but then also this virus and then right after that, they would have gone through the Depression, where the market lost all of its value. They would have gone right into World War II. And coming out of World War II, they would have gone right into the Korean War. And coming out of the Korean War, they would have maybe lived long enough to see the Vietnam War. And they would have been an experience of the Cold War. So you can imagine, that as a Christian, God uses these uh, to help shape and mold us. And the reason that we have these situations that go on is because the world is cursed. When Adam and Eve sinned, not only was man cursed, uh, needed a savior, needed to have forgiveness and redemption, but also the world was cursed. And the world is groaning and, and, and it, it can't sustain. And, and there is um, earthquakes and volcanoes. And, uh, and then because of sin, there's wars. And, and because of our close living and, and sinful nature, there are diseases such as AIDS and cancer that, that are always going to be with us. Uh, but consider maturing during this time. Uh, take a look here um, uh, in Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Let's take a look at that verse together. We looked at 28, but let's go ahead and look at uh, verse number 20, 29. He said, um, uh, For whom he did foreknow, 
he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the first among many brethren. Now, this is a great verse for us to study one time to understand all these terms of foreknowledge and predestination, but that's not our goal tonight. We want to just look at the one little phrase there, uh, the word conformed. We see to be conformed means jointly formed. It means uh, similar. It means to conform to or fashion like unto. This word, interesting, since we're in a Bible study, this word is only used twice in the scriptures. It's found here in Romans 8.29, and it's also found in Philippians chapter 3, verse 21. Let's take a look at that. If you'll just flip your Bible over to Philippians 3.21, uh, we can take a look at how it is used, and, and I think it will help us to understand uh, what the Holy Spirit is trying to drive home here for us where we live today. The Bible says in Philippians chapter number 3, verse 21, it says, Who shall change our vile body? So he's talking about the flesh. He's talking about this body that's all corrupt, that it may be fashioned like unto, there's our word, there's our conformed, like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Because Christ has been restored, he has been raised from the dead, this is talking about our body when it comes out of the grave. When we're resurrected, we'll get our new body. We'll see him as he is and we'll have a glorious body. So God is going to change us or fashion us uh, to have a glorified body. That's why we won't die. That's why we won't have knee problems. That's why we won't have glasses. That's why we won't have the situations that we have today. So that's talking about the body. But in Romans 8.29, our conformed is talking about the soul. Uh, who we are, that in the future, um, when we see him in the air, our physical body will be changed. But during this unprecedented time, he wants us to be working on our soul. And so God is allowing this trial for us because he's working on our mind and our will and our intellect. Now, you know this, that our spirit is completely saved. Our spirit doesn't need any working on. When we became believers, our sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. And when we die one day, we will stand before the Lord. But our soul, our mind, our will, and our intellect intellect is being saved. That's just a fancy way of saying progressive sanctification. As you are now born again and you look back at your life, you have probably seen changes. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. As you learn Bible principles and you learn things, you now are maturing in your faith. And God is using this trial for whatever reason it is that he has allowed it to come. Is it for judgment? Is it for whatever it is? I don't know. But I know one thing. For us as believers, it's a trial, a test of our faith. Are we going to trust God that he's in control? And when we do, he begins to grow us. He changes us. Our mind and our will and our intellect into the image of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter number two to have the mind of Christ. And so these trials are shaping us for maybe even a deeper time or a more testing time so that we can be reliable, that our faith will stand the test, that the impurities will be removed so that we can stand and that we can stand up for Christ when things become difficult. Brothers and sisters in Christ that have lived before us have gone through this, even all the way to death for the cause of Christ. Praise God, that's not the situation that we're facing right now today uh, in the sense of our faith, but more because of what is taking place here. So during this unprecedented time, uh, we are not to miss the lessons uh, that we can be learning about our Lord and Savior these lessons can't be learned any other way. If something's always working in my home, I never learn how to become an electrician if my electric's always working. But when it doesn't work, it causes me to learn something I don't know. And in the same way, there are lessons that you and I don't know. And our walk of faith is very precious to the Lord. He saved us to grow. He saved us to mature. He saved us to use us in a powerful way. So let me exhort you here. Don't get caught up 
with all the hype and doom. That's not, that's not what we're to be caught up in. We're not to get caught up in that area. Uh, God is in control. He makes no mistakes. Let the world fuss and be frustrated over the circumstances. Let us who love the Lord watch him and take the circumstances and use them for our good and his glory. So take advantage of these circumstances that we find ourselves in and use them for God's glory. Who can you influence? Those of you that have children, this is a great time to be instructing your children uh, what to do when these situations happen. And they do happen, and it will happen in their lifetime too. I'm thinking about my daughters, and I'm thinking about uh, how they may be responding to what's going on. And I hope that they're trusting the Lord. Uh, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 1, 6, 7, and 8. 1 Peter 1, 6, 7, and 8. It's another familiar verse. We're kind of in some familiar verses. We're almost to the end of our study here. The Bible says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Sometimes when we see temptation in the Bible, we got to look at the Greek or look at the original to see if it's talking about temptation in the sense of tempting. And we know God can't tempt us. So we know that this word is tested or trials. We're being tested. And it also tells us in 7, confirming that, that the trial of your faith being more precious than of gold that perisheth. So more this right now for you to learn through this is more important than your economic growth, uh, your work, uh, anything. This is the most important. Though it be tried with fire, might be found under the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. In other words, God's just perfecting us. And that word perfect is maturing us. God's in the maturing business. He's in the business of tempering our faith. Every time it heats up, God reveals really what we are. I tell this to the young men at training when I'm um, recruiting them. I said, Bible time creates an atmosphere that's not realistic. It's kind of like in the morning when you brush your teeth, you squeeze the toothpaste and, and, and something comes out and you hope it's toothpaste. But if that product was inferior or harmful, you would say, what in the world's wrong with the Crest or what's wrong with the Colgate? This is, this is wrong. And you'd call the company and say, you know, this product is flawed. Well, in the same way, trials like this squeeze us and really what's in our heart comes out. And sometimes it's not always the response it should be. And sometimes it is. Sometimes it is a godly response to the situation we're in. Remember, no matter what we lose, we can only lose earth. Everything's always a game with Christ. And so we're going to have to trust him. Many believers before us have gone through perilous times of being in prison the rest of their life for the faith. For us, it is a pandemic. It's real. And we need to be careful. And I hope nobody, nobody that we know or really anybody would 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 would, get, would 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 contract it, but also there's been many people that have died from it, and I'm 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 worried about that, and I don't like it, but I know that God's in control, and we can trust Him. So let's look at trials biblically and rejoice because of the results. Here's the results at the end of this trial, and it's all over, and we're all shaking hands again at uh, Faithway Baptist Church, or maybe we'll never shake hands again. I don't know, but whatever they might be. It is the trial that changes our character and draws us closer to Christ. In other words, we ought to be closer to Christ after this than we were before. If not, we missed it. And I hope that's not the case. Consider maturing. Consider him first and foremost. But then consider maturing, allowing God to do a work in your life that will forever change you and make you the man or woman of God that you need to be. Don't waste this opportunity to be changed through the trials that we're all facing. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, but to grow in grace, and I hope you will. And our last point tonight is uh, consider moreover. That's kind of an odd phrase there, consider moreover. And I'm, I'm really using that because we find that word in the scriptures. And so we're using that as to leap forward. So let's once again look at Romans uh, chapter number 8, and we're going to start at verse 30. And we're going to read some verses that will be a great encouragement for each one of them. I know they are for me. 
These are my go-to verses um, when I doubt or when um, there's difficulty. I, I, I spend time in these verses. So let me read them as you follow along, starting in Romans chapter number 8 and um, again in verse number 30. The Bible says, Moreover, whom he, deep, who he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? In verse 32, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? We're his sons and daughters too. And in Christ, we, 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 we inherit uh, as though we are adopted into the, uh, where we are adopted into God's family. Now, these are the verses I really want to look at, especially when we get to verse 34. In, in uh, verse 33, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that dieth, yea, rather than that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, and who shall also make intercession for us. That's the position. That's our great high priest. Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, I think we have a little bit of that right now, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril. I say that's where we are too. Or the sword. As it is written. When you see the word as it is written, I want you to get this picture in your mind. When it's as it is written, it never goes away. Um, you can write like my uh, uh, grandkids and my daughters when they were younger. They would go out into our driveway or at grandpa's house and they would take chalk and they would write all over. And when we would leave, my father-in-law would take the hose and he would hose it down and it was all gone. So it only stayed momentarily. But when we see the word as it is written, I want you to picture of something engraved into stone. It cannot change. This is God's word. It's unchangeable. And he reminds us, as it is written, it's amazing that he writes it there because maybe some of us struggle. Where is God in the midst of this? But nothing can separate us. It says, as is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That word conquerors is, is uh, the word that Nike uses as their logo. Nike means conquerors and uh, just do it. And, and in the same way, we're more than conquerors. We never lose. We can't lose because of who God is. We can never be separated from him. We can't fall away from him. He is there holding us. Whether we, uh, whether we feel we're being held or not, he is holding us, and then we can't lose our salvation no matter what we go through. He goes on, he says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Boy, what a promise going through this time. Um, I was talking to my wife the other night, and she reminded me and encouraged me to say, you know, we really need these verses that encourage us and, and help us to see the attributes of God. And this, this is powerful. No matter what happens, if the virus were to take over all of the United States and all of the world. And just like in 19, um, uh, uh, 1918 to, 20, to 1920, 40 million people perished. It's still okay. God's in control. And we can't lose our salvation. And spiritual wickedness cannot overcome us. And, and, and all we lose is earth will be with the Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. He's always with us. I know if you had children uh, and you hugged them when they were going through a tough time, that meant the world to them. They felt a security with you. And in the same way, God's loving arms are around you right now. And you might not be able to feel it, but we look at the scriptures, and I think that's why Paul said, 
as it is written, as it is written, because it's that important. So no matter how long we stay under this time of unprecedented difficulties, we can trust the Lord. Let me draw you your attention to this illustration. It might open up the windows of understanding to what this passage is talking about and what we looked at tonight. Illustrations are to help us to understand the passages. They're not to emotionally stir us. They're to drive us to the truth. And I think this one does. There's a, there's a gentleman, his name is Frank Garlock. Maybe that name rings a bell. Um, I can let you know if you know who Patch the Pirate is. He would be Patch the Pirate, uh, Sun Long, Ron Hamilton, that sings Rejoice in the Lord, and God Makes No Mistakes, and has written very uh, many songs, and has done much uh, for children's ministry. But anyways, uh, Frank Garlick's mother was, uh, was going into surgery, and as he was meeting her in the room, uh, he wanted to pray with her. And she said, sure. She goes, she would, she would like to do that. She was a believer as well. And so for some reason, she called him to come a little closer. Maybe her voice was weak or maybe she was already sedated. I'm not sure. And so uh, as Frank Garlock, Mr. Garlock, got a little closer to his mom, he, he asked her a simple question. He said, Mom, uh, what would you like me to pray about? And this is what her response was uh, as she was facing surgery. She told him to pray that I would not miss what God has for me and that I would learn all the lessons he wants me to learn as I go through this surgery. And as I began to think about that little illustration, that ought to be our prayer today. God, here's my prayer, is that as I go through this unprecedented time, which is not abnormal for a sin-cursed world, but as I go through it, and whatever that might be, even after this trial passes, would you teach me the lessons that you have for me? That I would not wake up when the trial's over and find out that I went through it in a selfish manner, complaining and bickering and murmuring about what took place, but that I would trust you in every aspect of what I'm going through. I can't help but dream and think maybe why God's using this. Maybe this is what God will, will use to wake the church up out of its slumber and realize that we're not in control, but God is. Maybe this is what God will use to the unsaved world to cause them to come to you and ask questions about your faith. Maybe what God will use this, because I don't know if you sense this or not, but I can tell you that I miss the physical contact with the people of Faithway Baptist Church. And I hope that maybe this would drive us to see the importance of church over everything. That, that the gathering of together is more than just a duty. It, it is a privilege that we have to enter into one another's lives on Sunday and Wednesday and to be able to pray for one another and, 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 and knock at the very door of heaven and make our request be made known unto him. Oh, church. May we never forget the importance, again, of gathering together over every other situation, sporting event, TV show, work, whatever it is, is that we would make a priority to be in your house, not to check it off, not to find more favor with God, but because we need each other. And it's the way God sharpens us. All of us have a little bit of a rough side in it. Sometimes that roughness uh, is used to smooth out um, other believers as well. So on every occasion, it's time for us to glorify God, see his promise, and grow in our Christ-likeness. So that's the Bible study for tonight. I, I hope it was encouraging. I hope it was helpful. It's helped me. I know that I don't want to miss what God has. I don't want to miss what God has by ministering to others. I want to reach out to others, and I want to be an encouragement to others, but I don't want to miss, because as our quote said at the very beginning, really our top responsibility is our own personal walk with Christ and also our personal sanctification. So I hope that when we leave from here and we get back to church together, uh, back to what we would call normal, that we'd have a pretty fired up church. We'd have a sweet church. We would have a church that's repented. We would have lives that have been changed. I hope, I hope that's the case, and I hope we can reach our neighborhood too. So I'm going to pray, and then I have a couple closing comments, and 
and then we will close for tonight. Thank you so much for taking time to, to make this a priority tonight uh, to be on the live stream. Let's pray. Father, thank you now for Christ. Certainly, uh, these are not my words. These are your words. And may we not forget them as we Bible study together uh, from, from my home or our home that the Lord has given us, Nancy and I, uh, that uh, is a blessing to your home. I pray that you would see the urgency of tonight's message and that you would, you would Bible study it yourself and that you would make sure that you are not missing what God has for you. Father, that's our prayer, that we would not miss what you have. Father, use this time of sharpening, this time of, of great fire upon our own souls, that our faith would be genuine and we would change. Father, thank you for the trial we're going through. We don't know the outcome yet. We don't know if we'll be sheltered for another six weeks. We don't know. But what we do know is that you're in control and we can use our voice, even from our home, to influence others and be a blessing. Father, help us to do that. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I hope that was helpful, like I said. And I just want to remind you of uh, just a couple things. I'm really excited about the prayer time tomorrow. Uh, when the gentleman uh, dialed the number, it's, a, it's an area coded number, and then as soon as you dial it, it'll say, um, uh, put in your four or six digit, your six digit code, which I'll give you. You type in the code, and boom, you're, in the, you're on the conference call. Some of the fellows uh, were texting me and saying that they couldn't get on, that the that when they tried to put this, when they put the six numbers in, it said that um, it was already full. Well, what we learned last night was just hang up and dial again. What happens is when so many are coming on at one time, it has a ten tendency to say that it can't get you in. So as these fellows hung up and recalled, they all got in. So it might take a little bit of time. You might have to dial it once or twice, uh, but I encourage you to do it. That'll be at 7 p.m. And Tim and I will put together an email and a text message to send out to you with instructions on it for tomorrow night. Now you say, well, you know, I, I really don't want to pray. Uh, last night we had 34 people on the uh, call and only six people prayed. So all the men were encouraged though. So it isn't if you pray or not. It's just the fellowship that we can have praying together, whether you're the one of the ones that pray or somebody else does. Please, please be doing that. And second, uh, please uh, make sure that you're um, encouraging one another. Tomorrow, uh, send out some text messages and call somebody and encourage them and see how they're doing working at home or maybe they're out of work or uh, whatever's going on in their life and try to be an encouragement uh, to them. And third and not last is that um, I'll be sending out an email uh, tomorrow uh, talking about stewardship and what does that look like as we go through this unprecedented time? How can we be, um, how can we be, um, um, let me think of the right word here. How can we be stewarding our stewardship? What should we be doing? And the reason I'm doing that is also is because a few people have asked me um, about uh, uh, where to um, uh, send their, their, their tithe and offerings. And so I will be including in there uh, where those can be sent. Uh, certainly, you know my heart I, uh, from the pulpit. Do not mention that. I believe that's between you and the Lord. Um, I have said, and I will say again, that your stewardship is real. Our time, our talents, and our treasures are the Lord. And so I want to just not send you an address where to send it. I want to explain to you the heart behind it. And that is, it's for your benefit that you steward your stewardship, that your time and your talent are just as important. And um, it'll be an encouraging a little paper that will help you in that area as well. So in just a moment here, um, Mr. Tim is going to turn it off. But before he does, I want to say that Tim has been nothing but a, a blessing to me. I have the great privilege of having him live here at the home. So we're sheltered together and we're spending more time together than usual. And I want to tell you that if you like this automation, uh, don't thank me. Thank Tim. He is uh, taking care of it. He is, um, he is writing the instructions. He is making sure that everything goes. So this coming Sunday will be just like last Sunday. We'll be, uh, we'll be, I'll be at the church and I will be giving the message from the church and I look forward to you tuning in, tuning in on live streaming um, as well. God bless and thank you.